Hello students, welcome to the lecture on kitchen and restaurant design and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Discuss the basic physical layout of kitchen and restaurant. Describe designing and planning kitchen. Explain restaurant and restaurant's bar. Let's start with the concept of kitchen and restaurant design. Kitchen and restaurant design requires the expertise of many different specialists to produce designs that meet the requirements of productive and cost-effective working environments. The decisions of various designers strongly affect each other. Owners and end users are important players in design process as well as cooking and ventilation equipment manufacturers. Due to the wide diversity of their expertise, a common understanding is needed to accelerate the process. An integrated design environment supports the entire design process, example visualization. Total objective is to produce design data in a form that designers can utilize in different applications. A restaurant is off to a great start when the details of the kitchen are the first thing addressed with the design team. A properly designed kitchen allows a restaurant to perform for the customer when the rubber hits the road meal time. Think of the kitchen as the engine under the hood of a performance car. This car, like a restaurant, will often be idle but when it is time to perform, it must without hesitation or it will lose the race. That is the customers. Kitchen design trends are among the slowest changing trends there are, due in no small part to the fact that kitchens are expensive, time consuming and invasive to redo. But there has been a gradual but major upheaval in kitchen design in the last few years and a major change in the way that designers look at the kitchen space. Let us now discuss about restaurants. A restaurant is defined as an establishment designed in whole or in part to accommodate the consumption of food and beverages. Every facet of restaurant design and layout is a product of the goals and concept of the business. The bigger the goals and concept, the more resources should go into design elements. The menu, clientele and price point should all support the layout of the restaurant to create a single concept. Finally. Design elements should support each other. No single element should stand out from the others without wanting to point customer in that direction. Cost. It is tempting to cut corners when designing the layout of a restaurant, but doing so can lead to long-term problems and unnecessary renovation. As with any investment, it is important to consider a 10 or 20 year business plan when deciding where and how to spend money during the design process. Cost should be funneled toward elements where revenue is generated. For most restaurants, this includes the entrance, lobby, bar and dining room. An upscale restaurant has to have upscale furnishings and design elements. A casual restaurant cannot overlook the need for a new, clean atmosphere. 
The bottom line is that guests have great food and a clean, comfortable environment in which to enjoy it. A restaurant operator has to be willing to spend what it takes to achieve this. Entrance The entrance is the first and last impression our business makes. It has to be inviting and it has to capture the essence of restaurant. It should be big enough for guests to gather if there is a wait, but not so big that it takes space away from the dining room and bar. A good entrance contributes to the natural flow of a restaurant's layout. It sends guests on their way to a revenue-generating destination. It provides a platform for the bus of the building. Something positive should be happening inside building, whether it is great food, a crowded bar or a banquet even. This should be visible from the entrance and convince guests to enter. Kitchen The kitchen has to have adequate space for all of the necessary equipment plus ample room for employees to work. Necessary equipment can involve ovens, stoves, broilers, fryers, a dish machine, triple sinks and plenty of shelf space. A prep area and industrial sinks usually accompany dry storage space. The kitchen should be just large enough to accomplish the goals of the restaurant. Employees should be able to move comfortably and safely in a fast-paced, high-stress environment. Office The manager's office should be as small as possible while still allowing business to be properly conducted. Should be in a secure location of the building, far from the dining room, employee area and bus of the kitchen. Employee area There must be space for employees to congregate, store personal belongings and hang coats. There must also be room for important information to be communicated, such as work schedules, manual notices. Best opportunity to create this space is usually in or next to the kitchen area. Bar The bar has to fit into the concept of the restaurant. At the same time, it should stand alone as a comfortable destination for any dining experience the restaurants offer. A great bar space does both while being visually inviting and highlighting the products the bar hopes to sell. Restrooms The restrooms are the most underrated expect of the design and layout of the building. Most guests who dine in a restaurant will visit the restroom during their stay. The restroom has to have fixtures that contribute to the sense of cleanliness. It should be large enough to accommodate multiple guests without taking room away from the dining room. While running a restaurant is more than just serving food, but the serving of food remains the first priority on the restaurant's mission list. Therefore, the kitchen must be designed to function efficiently. A poorly designed kitchen will decrease productivity, increase wait time and contribute to employee turnover. Quality of food and fast services merely relies on the efficiency of a well properly outfitted kitchen. Now moving on to the next topic, we will discuss designing and planning kitchen. The heart of every restaurant is the kitchen. Here raw ingredients are prepared for cooking and cooked for service. The quality of food and speed of service depend on the efficiency. Hence planning, kitchen, design and layout must be undertaken with due care and expert advice if necessary. Errors committed in planning and purchasing specification are extremely costly in the end. A poorly planned kitchen result in high payroll, slow production, unhappy kitchen staff and dissatisfied guests. Ideally, kitchens should be planned according to the menu envisage. This will allow proper equipment selection, spacing, determination of capacity and purchase accordingly. Today's higher rents and construction costs dictate wise use of every square inch of space. Restaurants should be knowledgeable about both cooking and space allocation. Consultants, if hired, should be interviewed in depth before assignment. The kitchen design of any restaurant has to not only reflect the menu, but it has to be um, a certain percentage of the restaurant. You know, the smaller your kitchen is, the larger your dining room is. Um, nobody pays to sit in the kitchen, but people do pay to sit in the dining room. So your kitchen size and the flow of your kitchen is very, very important. It also helps you in, in creating your menu or creating the entrees on your menu. You want to make sure that if you're a pasta house and do a lot of pasta dishes at night, that you have a five or six or eight burner stove so you can boil the water. Um, you want to make sure that the stove, the grill, 
the burners and the fryer are all in a certain line, so whether you have five people on your line at night cooking or two people, the two people can utilize the system as easily as the five people can. You're not going to have the same amount of customers on a Friday night that you have on a Monday night, so you have to cut your staff accordingly, which means that the staff that's cooking has to be able to utilize the, the flow of the kitchen. There are four major sections to a restaurant kitchen. First, pickup area. This area serves as a license between the restaurant kitchen and servers. The pickup area should be easy spot to figure out because it will always be located near the entrance of the kitchen or the window. It is here we will need enough counter space to handle the orders of at least 10% of seating. At least one hand washing station should be here that can be reached by both the cooks and the servers to station if using a window. The pickup area should be located immediately next to the cold table, which will be used to place the final garnishes, lactose, tomatoes, pickles, etc. Number two, grill area. This is the heart of the restaurant kitchen. The grill area includes the grill, fryer, cold table, a freezer unit, firmware, and some counter space. It is here that the cook will be doing the most work. If restaurant's kitchen is spread out too far, it will either from best to worst slow down service, force us to raise manpower, or cause poor quality output and frequent product loss. To avoid the grill area from being too spread out, layer each component spreading outwards within reach of the grill. Begin by mirroring the grill across from the cold table. A cold table will offer quick access to garnishes and other frequently needed products that need refrigeration. Underneath a cold table is a small refrigerator's worth of storage. This can be utilized for products such as raw meats which are used directly on the grill. By mirroring the cold table across from the grill, the cook is allowed quick access to moving both raw products from the cold table refrigerators to the grill and cooked products to the finishing area. In order for the cooks to actually move the food from the grill back to the pickup area, they are going to need plates. A good place for firm wear plates is on shelves above cold table area. This would keep it as close to the grill as possible. There is a fryer within reach of grill. Second to the grill, the fryer is the most labor-intensive piece of equipment in restaurant. Depending on the grill type, we may need to maintain a minimum distance between the fryer and, and open flame source. This is a good place to have a small counter and a heat lamp just because we need a distance between the fryer and grill does not mean we cannot use that distance. Across from the fryer is a good location for a freezer unit. The purpose of this freezer is to store foods which will be used in the fryer. This will not be the main freezer unit. Some products such as French fries do not fixate on storing everything in one place by providing a smaller storage area and feeding that within reach we can restock between rushes without losing cooking time. There are several good freezers which can also double as countertops which can be used both for additional work areas as well as being a good place for other equipment we may use such as a toaster or hot storage devices. Number three is prepped area. Making a smooth transition out of the grill area and towards the prepped area, we find ourselves with only a few pieces of hardware left to place. The prepped area refrigerator will hold perishable goods that are frequently used during the prepped process. By keeping this near the grilled area, we can also hold some items that may not fit in the cold table area. Across the aisles from the stove is a prime location for the main prep counter. This counter would be within reach of the fridge, stove and future prep sink. Counter space is the most important area for a prep cook. Having a large area to work with tends to up productivity and lowers the risk of cross-contamination. And last, the fourth one, the storage area. The storage area is not strictly limited to one place. Everything does not have to be in one place. There should always be at least some of whatever product is needed next to where it is actually needed. Even if we do not have room to store entire weekly delivery within reach. That being said, there is one solid guideline to follow when it comes to main storage area. Keep it near where we take deliveries. 
Delivery trucks do not stock for us. Stocking takes labor and labor costs us money. The less time it takes for employees to put away deliveries, the more time they can spend on their main duties. Design main storage area near the back door. First decision involves selecting fuel. There are several from which to choose. Wood, natural gas, propane gas, electric, steam and heating oil. Wood and heating oil equipment are generally not used in kitchen except wood fire pizza ovens since they require frequent cleaning and consume space. The most frequently used fuels are natural gas, electricity, steam and propane. The choice of fuel depends on location. In large cities, natural gas and electricity are widely available and a combination of both is wise. Some region steams may be available and recommended for certain pieces of equipment. There are also steam generating units ready to install. Propane is recommended where neither gas or electricity is available, that is wilderness camps or resort. Chinese chefs prefer propane for its extremely intense heat. If electricity and gas are available, equipment should be selected accordingly. This will allow production if one or the other fuel is temporarily unavailable. Countries' electricity supply may be disrupted frequently and gas pressure inadequate for commercial use. In such reasons, propane or butane cylinders are recommended. Once the fuel choices are made, utilities should be contacted to ensure for timely hookups with a main supply lines and further planning can resume. Back of the house space including the kitchen varies with both the menu size and type of operation. There are no set rules or ratio. Repeat. There are no set rules or ratios for reference. However, in full-scale restaurant, 5 square feet per seat is a good guideline. If many convenience and prudence are used, kitchen space requirements will be less. For take-out operation, back-of-the-house requirements are considerably less than in standard restaurant. The first step in kitchen planning is a flowchart which allows eliminating bottlenecks both for service and production. During planning, the following criteria should be considered. Departmentalization to achieve division of labor. Smooth traffic flow, increased efficiency, acceptable sanitary condition. Once these are settled, the following points become important. Lighting, ventilation, sprinkler system. Kitchen equipments. Kitchen equipment can be conveniently grouped into five categories. Storage, preparation, cooking, accessory, service equipment. Restaurant planners are advised to study all equipment available, manufacturer, source and compatibility with local standards in force. Storage equipment consists of industrial food grade selving. It may be wire or solid. Wire selving is appropriate for canned goods or boxes. Solid selving is required in refrigerators and freezer. They are easy to clean. All selving must be arranged appropriately to facilitate adequate air circulation. There are upright chest and work in freezer. Chest freezer preserve cold air but utilize more floor space, whereas upright freezers use less floor space but allow cold air to escape rapidly each time the door is open. Work in freezers are recommended for operation using considerable amounts of frozen foods. Freezer can be purchased prefabricated, modular, or be custom made. In every work in installation, Care should be taken to position the freezer to open into a refrigerator in order to preserve at least part of the cold air, which inevitably escapes each time the door is open. Cold air costs three times as much as warm air. There are standard or blast freezer for quick freezing of vegetables or plated food. Cryogenic freezer use liquid nitrogen or carbon dioxide and freeze fast. Refrigerators. A refrigerator, often called a fridge for short, is a cooling appliance comprising a thermally insulated compartment and a mechanism to transfer heat from it to the external environment, cooling the contents to a temperature below ambient. Refrigerators are extensively used to store foods which deteriorate at ambient temperatures. Steam fueled equipment. 
steam-jacketed Callisville countertop tilting or non-tilting with or without spout in various sizes are available. Pressure steamers are suitable for quantity batch cooking. Combi ovens combine steaming and roasting and are popular due to their space-saving features. Ovens, a chamber or enclosed compartment for heating, baking or roasting food as in a stove or for firing, baking, hardening or drying objects as in a kiln. A wide range of ovens is available. They can be under ranges, freestanding, electric or gas, steam injected or not. Convention ovens are practical for roasting and rotate hot air speeding up cooking time. Conveyor type ovens are appropriate in high volume pizza operations or in very busy bakeries. Microwave ovens are used mostly for re-thermalizing. Accessories Electronic thermostats, energy load, lavers reduce peak electricity demand and automatic shut-off switches fall under this category. Service equipment helps to keep prepared food hot, steam tables, flambe, carts, gyridons, coffee machines, small wares, pots, pans, whips, coops, self-labeling plate dispensers, dishwashers, compactors, filtering devices fall into this category. Once equipment selection is completed and the layout determined, the planner must contact utilities and advise them to ensure timely hookup to main supply lines. Floor space dedicated to kettles must be furnished with splash guards and drainage. There is a wide range of manufacturers of kitchen equipment and the planner must carefully specify before making purchase decision. Equipment is sold by dealers, distributors, jobbers, manufacturers, agents or directly by the manufacturer depending on the size of the order or the size.
Let us now know the meaning of restaurant and restaurant bar. Restaurant bar is the area of the hotel where alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks are mixed and served. Typical location include a hotel lobby inside the restaurant or poolside. Often a bar inside a restaurant serves from the full restaurant menu and can be a great way to be seated and dine right away even when the restaurant has a long wait. The restaurant and bar is one of the largest profit centers of all service operation and not surprisingly, it is a sector in which there is a lot of jostling going on between small and large scale businesses to get more customers. Decor and ambience play a huge role in getting people through the door and the food is what keeps them returning or not. With that said, we tend to see the most instrumental and over-the-top investment put into creatively designing the interiors of some of the top metropolitan trendy restaurant bars. These efforts almost never go in vain because most of us love and will always pay for great design and an even grander experience. It is the single most important aspect of design that can make or break the success of a restaurant since it sets the ambience, capture eye-catching details and should enhance the visual presentation of the cuisine among other things like the menu, artwork and other guests. Let the restaurant bar double as a wait station, make the bar as self-sufficient as possible. Outfit it with its own POS system so that the bartender can take care of customer taps right on the spot. An integrated POS also lets the bartender send food orders to the kitchen directly from the bar. Be wary of letting staff into the bar area even if it is to use a POS system during a rush. Bartenders are typically territorial creatures and do not like wait staff underfoot. We may need to implement a rule that no wait staff is allowed behind a bar during the dinner shift. Set the mood with lighting. Lighting in the bar should be subtle. Not so dark customers cannot read the menu, but definitely not too bright. Recessed lighting and track lighting with dimmer switches allow us to control the light, adjusting it for the time of the day. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. The quality of food and fast services merely relies on the efficiency of a well properly outfitted kitchen. The heart of every restaurant is the kitchen. Refrigerators prevent bacterial growth and prolong the shelf life of perishable foods. The restaurant and bar is one of the largest profit centers of all service operators. A bar right at the entrance of a restaurant can do double duty as a waiting area.